Welcome back everybody, the History Guy here, and I'm not going to show this battle, but before we get into the second battle of Manassas, I did want to at least show what was going on with the uh, Manassas Depot battle. I I'm fighting it right now. Uh, these are None of these are my own troops. Uh, so what I've done is I've built this battle line first along the woods, and I kind of goaded him into coming out of his fort and attacking me. And now, as I've been weakening him, I've been pushing back a little bit, and I've got a lot of him bunched up right in here. And it seems to be working out quite well. Uh, for the most part, inflicting pretty heavy casualties on him. I've taken out almost 2,000 of his men at the loss of about 500 on my side. And uh, since numbers were almost exactly even to start, the more I can do that, the easier it becomes to take these forts at the end. Uh, so that's kind of my goal right now, is just to weaken him sufficiently to where I can pretty much just walk into the fort. So I'll come back and show you the end of that. So with 52 minutes to go, i uh, finally taking the first fort. I've gotten myself up from being basically even to about a uh, 3,200 man advantage now. That should be sufficient to take both forts. And again, casualty is not a concern. None of these troops belong to me. Now we're going to go ahead and move the artillery down so that they're in position to go after the second fort, which is going to be a little bit better defended. Now on to fort number two, with 23 minutes to go. Again, I don't know how long it gives you as far as leeway on these forks, but I won't take any chances with that since these casualties are basically meaningless to me. It's a callous thing to say, but they're little sprites on a the screen. They're not real people, so I don't feel as bad about it. I'm going all General Granite Cold Harbor here. And that'll do it. Supply Depot 2 is captured, so now we move on to the second battle of Manassas. I'm going to get my army built and ready to go. And we're going to be defending, so I feel like it should go pretty well for me. Okay, so here's the situation going into the second battle of Bull Run. I actually have a lot of money and manpower and a lot of everything available to me. I could build my army higher, but I feel like this is going to be enough. Uh, I'm going to go in, at least for now, with about 24,000 men and 120 guns. And we just have to get kind of through this first phase of the battle where we don't really get to see what his full force looks like. Uh, but we'll get a good glimpse of it after that. So we'll get through this. Um, no, I guess this is going to be kind of the main deal here. No, there we go. That was weird. So we get through this little phase right here, and then we'll get a glimpse of what his full force is going to look like. Now, unlike when I fight as... The Union, I just kind of bypassed this whole section. I imagine we're in for a fight here, so uh, let's actually pull back. To just behind this water. Actually, I think we can probably keep cable right there. And this may get kind of tricky because he's got a significant advantage in numbers, so depending on how much he decides to press this, we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and speed things along here. So we've got the 24-pounders with O'Hare, plus a two-star unit of Napoleons right here. But he's got a lot of men, so if he really presses this thing, he could give me some real trouble here. I'm going to push down into these woods. Huh, he may not do anything at all. All right, well, we'll come back if he does. And if not, we'll go back to camp and see what the numbers look like for the main battle. All right, well, he came at me couple melee attacks that didn't go well for him at all. Uh, you can see Cutshaw up there, 430 to 28. 95th Rifles, 200 kills to 23 deaths. Cable, 132 and 55. So even with him throwing his infantry at me, it has not gone well for him. And that's without him being able to get into range of my 
artillery, which would really make a mess. So we're going to be able to inflict some casualties, which then I will be able to replace back in camp. Because I've got plenty of resources, manpower, money to be able to do that. So this is basically some free, free casualties I'm inflicting on him. I think that's pretty much going to do it. Send the 95th rifles up here to go hit Patrick again. Make things worse for him there. And Double Day may reform for another for a counterattack, but it looks like my 24 pounders got in on the action a little bit. So let's pull cable back some. Let him get even closer to my guns. He's now coming for. I think that's pretty well going to do it for this fight. He's not going to risk doing anything else, I don't think. But we took out 2,300 men and lost 150. So it's going to let me play this out past the timer, which I'm absolutely going to do because I've got a chance to wipe these units out. That's 8,000 of his men. Actually, 9,500 of his men. So we're gonna we're gonna play this whole thing out here, at Brunish Farm. O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws are gonna have themselves a day in this battle. These 24 pounders. It's nice to finally have a full battery of them to get into action. Some ammo issues. Nothing I can't resolve though. I got 50,000 in supply, which I will again I'll uh, replenish them. Guns up closer. Yeah, we're gonna do what we can to wipe him out here. You can see the numbers. I've lost 220 men, taking out almost 4,000. Go ahead, bring your guys closer. We'll just sit here and inflict crazy amounts of casualties on him. I'm just gonna bring these 24 pounders up even closer. It might take them a little while to get there. But he had a uh, better than two to one advantage. He had me by 5,100 men to start this. He's now got me by 1,500. to do. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and wipe these guys out and then we'll come back with the main battle. Well, I didn't quite get to wipe him out. He only had about 1,400 men left. So now we get to move on to the camp and we'll see what things are going to look like in the main battle. Alright, he's going to have about 30,000 men. Now once I replenish, mine will go up a little bit more, but that is very manageable for me and again like I said I could build my army up bigger and I'm not sure how much that's going to change things for him uh, but you can see I've got 61,000 men and almost $200,000 and 65 reputation points available to me so I'm just going to top everybody off here and I'll do it with veteran troops because I can and I want to get these guys all up in experience as best I can we don't have quite enough Whitworths to do that so it looks like we're going to go with 900 on these guys So the nice thing about the level of recon that I have is that my spotting is off the charts and so I can see these guys coming from really far away. And with that in mind, I can see that he is attempting to move a lot of troops over to this side. So I've got to be ready for that. 
I'm gonna get one of my sharpshooter units over there. He's moved out with his artillery first, which is just so ridiculous and so helpful to me. I'm gonna try to spread my troops out best I can, get everybody right where I want them. And I just gotta be prepared for an attempt to overwhelm me from this side. I think I've got enough over there, but I just don't want to get caught. Let's move these 10-pounders over there. Numbers-wise, he's not going to have a huge advantage, though I, uh, I just have to be careful in the early stages because a lot of my troops don't come until the, the flanking attack. Troops massing on my right flank. This side we should be fine. Eh, my sharpshooters might be stuck here for now. out and try to get a couple shots on these on this artillery before he gets too close to range for me although they might get wiped out before I get that chance yeah it looks like we need to pull him back Man, I love this ability to spot these guys way back there. Sure makes my job a little easier in maneuvering. And as usual with 2nd Manassas, he's going to wait until he's got all of his troops in a position to launch any kind of an attack. But occasionally he moves these guns up too close and I get easy kills. Be careful about my flank over here. If you put somebody out on that side, that could be trouble. Yeah, he seems to be probing, but not really attacking. Let's go ahead and skip ahead. So here comes an attack, but not really much of one. My sharpshooters have already got almost a thousand kills because I was just sniping away at him and wiped out several of his batteries that way. He is going to hit the 95th rifles pretty hard over here on the side but the 24 pounders are gonna have a little to say about that. So just looking at the numbers now, I've already inflicted 4,000 casualties on him. I've lost uh, 97 men. So what I've done now is I moved my other sharpshooter unit over to this side and replaced them on the flank with another thousand man skirmisher unit. The idea being that my sharpshooters are kind of wasted out on the flanks where there's no attacks happening. So uh, these guys already have 1,700 kills. These ones probably could have had equal numbers if I had had them to begin with. So just going to keep picking these guys off. I just wiped out another battery. Gotta be careful because here comes Meade, but he's marching right in front of my field of fire and most of my artillery. Just making their job nice and easy. Sharpshooters just took their first casualties. But at this point in the first phase of the battle, I've already taken out about a third of his army, 6,000 men, at the loss of 103 for me. So now we move on to his next main assault. All right, he's gonna. Looks like he's gonna launch an attack on this side. Just gotta be careful for the 95th rifles because he is really kind of keying in on that one little spot in the line. 
But so far, so good for them. They've got uh, 1,700 kills and about 100 deaths. We'll get both of our sharpshooters right next to each other. And just pile up on him right now. Again, he's moving his guns up right, right into range of my skirmishers, and I don't understand why he's doing that. He's making my job so easy. So we'll definitely be moving this thing up to Major General difficulty after Antietam. So I'll get through this battle, get through the next couple of battles, and in the meantime I'm going to start playing through on Major General. And we're once again going to ramp up this campaign to the next level since it's remarkably easy so far. Just to get a little bit more of a challenge. But in the meantime, we'll continue the fun. He's up to 21,000 men now against my 9,600. All right, we gotta watch the ammo issues here. Just make sure he doesn't load up on one spot too much. There's a lot of men coming this way. I'm actually a little more concerned with my right flank because it's so thinly defended. I feel like the attack on the left is pretty much going to be over here, so I'm going to move these sharpshooters over, get them in position to maybe start protecting this side a little more. So I've got enough defense on my left, especially with the guns over there. Oh, here's Ohio Outlaws. The uh, 24 pounders are up to 2,000 kills, and we are still just getting started. I'm trying to get these guns resupplied, but they're firing as quickly as they can supply. Supplied now, too. Still got a lot of guns he's bringing up. These sharpshooters up a little further. Alright, so here's the situation now. He's still got about twice my numbers. And I've wiped out a lot of units, so it's actually hard to get an accurate figure on what I've inflicted. But I've only lost 212 men. The 95th Rifles just can't get resupplied because as quickly as they're resupplying, they're firing. One sharpshooter unit's got 3,000 casualty er, uh, kills now. The other one's got 1,300, even though they didn't fight the first half of the battle. I figured this one was really never going to be in doubt, just because the Confederates have such a strong defensive position on this battle. And short of the Union figuring out that the easy way to win is to just outflank and hit this objective from behind which I know the AI doesn't do. I knew there was really probably not a lot he was gonna do to win this one. So the big thing for me now is that I'm gonna get my right flanking attack, which is where my two 1500 man melee cavalry units are. And that's where we're just gonna start gobbling up all of these weakened Union brigades. Flank attack will be hum coming here before too long, and I'm actually getting several more uh, thousand man units of skirmishers as well. And I'm going to need the supply because I'm starting to run low on ammo everywhere along the line. But he's not going to have much of an army left at that point. He's down to just 11,000 men. I'm about to have the advantage in numbers, and the reinforcements are coming. 
All right, let's skip ahead to that. Here they come. I had to move my one unit of 12 uh, pounders back because he was targeting them with all of his artillery and I almost lost them. They've got 914 kills, so I want to keep that experience if I can. Reinforcements have arrived. Union's got a real problem on his hands now because he does not have the numbers. Suddenly I've got 20,000 to his 6,000. And honestly, I really don't even need most of these men. I'm mostly just going to take the Rough Riders and hunt and go crazy. I'll keep everybody else right where they are. Alright, let's slow things down here. Here comes the fun. These three can go after Taylor. So 3,000 mounted, or uh, 3,000 melee cav against 5,000 Union troops still in the field. Yeah, this isn't going to take long. Go grab these supplies, what's left of them. Rough Riders charging up San Juan Hill. Well, not really San Juan Hill, but you get the point. Had to make that reference. Interesting. Um, you don't think about it this way. That actually didn't go too well. Um, Teddy Roosevelt, of course, famously commanded the Rough Riders during the Spanish-American War. Became president a few years later. Uh, was posthumously given the Medal of Honor for that action a couple of years ago. Um, but... A lot of people don't think about it this way, but uh, folks like Teddy Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson, uh, who was U.S. president during World War I, both alive during the Civil War and both have memories. Woodrow Wilson, who grew up in Virginia, uh, I believe I remember reading that he actually saw Jefferson Davis riding through town when he was fleeing at the end of the Civil War. And I know that there's actually a photo, I believe, of little Teddy Roosevelt watching out the window in New York, uh, the funeral uh, procession of President Lincoln. Um, so that's pretty awesome to see those little connections to history. All right, we got a few units left to wipe out. And then I'm guessing it won't even take us to the next phase of this battle. I don't know. Let's come down and grab these supplies. careless here just because I'm trying to end this thing quickly and it's uh, led to a few issues that I'll resolve. There's a lot of supplies here that I really want to grab before I wipe his army out. So I'm going to do my best to do that here. Nice. 
All right, can we kill his generals? Not that it matters a whole lot. All right, I think these are the only two units left on the field. Oh, there's one unit of supplies that got away because his general got him. Uh, we're proceeding to the next day, I guess. Okay, we go back at it. And basically, um, numbers look pretty good for me at this point. We're pretty even as far as the breakdown goes of manpower, but uh, where artillery is concerned, I have a huge advantage. He's got very few guns. He's only got 19 on the field right now. He may get a few reinforcements, but very little. Uh, I'm just going to basically reoccupy the positions I already had. Let him come at me again. In fact, I might actually... Nah, I'm not going to move up. I'll just stay right where I'm at. Obviously some ammo issues, but I, I should have replenished my supply trains, so I should be able to deal with that. We'll get everybody into a decent defensive position. And then let them come at me again. Only this time I've got my flanking attack already in place. So I should be in really good shape to hit him pretty good along this flank. And just roll him up. And the casualties by the time we're all said and done should be pretty substantial for him. Let's get these supplies back. Get my 12 pounders over here. Get these guys right here. We'll get them resupplied. I'm just going to get my guns back a little bit because they're all right up on the line right now. Get these 10 pounders back. I'll get my general over here. And then we'll just let him hit me once again. Get Siegfried up into this position here. I'm a little, little thin right here, but that's not a huge deal. He's he's backing off now. I thought about moving up and occupying the, the railroad, fortifications, but he would have just gotten there a little too quickly for me. Let's get these guys moved up. Let's get our guns moved up. And then, of course, our two huge units of melee cav. And I'll send my supplies up here to help, help these folks. All right, is he going to do anything to attack me at all? I'm starting to doubt it. So I'm going to move these sharpshooters up and get them into position. Where's the other ones? They're way back here. Let's get them moved up too. Actually, I'll put them right here. I'll put these guys in the fortifications. Because just now, my flanking attack is getting into position. So we'll move them up. We'll move the cav in right behind them. Get up here and occupy these woods. Only tricky part here with the cav is, of course, these guys are in the in the woods. But I've got so many men, I'm not sure that's going to matter. All right. Those guys will be toast. So let's look at the numbers. Uh, he's got 11,000 men. That's what we're looking at having to take out. He, he'll probably get more before it's over. I'm going to move up and take these guns. 
I'll hold tight with these guys here. Let's get into position here, but stay on that side of the water. He's up on a hill there, so I want to probably hit him from the north if I can rather than direct. But if I can shoot it, shoot it out with him, I'll, that'll be okay. All right. So there goes that unit. Let's move the sharpshooters up. Move these ones up too. Gotta be careful here because he's got this artillery and they might be in range even if his actual troops aren't. Let's go grab some supply. They hit his general first and then they turned back from being told not to fire. There we go. So now what I can do is I can turn these guys around and hit these ones from behind. He's rushing Hiram Burdan over there to try to deal with that threat. And I'm going to take some casualties here, but this is really about disrupting the line. All right, we're on the last phase of this battle now, and I'm just cleaning things up. I'm capturing units left and right, and we're in the process of finishing him off. He did get more reinforcements, so once again, he's uh, got comparable numbers to me. So we're going to try to deal with the units in the field before we have to face these ones that have just come onto the battlefield somewhere. I would imagine right here I'm going to get hit by some of that, so we're just going to try to hold tight at the top of this hill. I'm getting some guns up there now. But let's try to destroy this pocket of troops before his reinforcements start pouring in. Every time I nearly wipe him out, he gets more. Move these 10 pounders up. Let's get my general over there. Now we're going to get these guys out of action. All right, I'm going to pull. Pull them off for now until the Rough Riders can reform a little bit and I can hit somebody with two when they get out into the open. But I've got to watch his reinforcements arriving. Looks like they may be hitting me down here or trying to. These guys being in the woods is not helping my situation. Let 
That may be all I'm going to do with my cavalry today. I was just too reckless with them. Much more so than I would have been if there were only 750 men. All right, I've still lost just 2,000 men, and probably half have been melee calf, just from my recklessness with charging them into large numbers of men, trying to disrupt his pockets of resistance. Looks like he's pretty well abandoned his attack there. He's still got close to 14,000 men, most of whom I don't see. That's it, skirmishers. Keep following me. Stay that way. All right, that's a pretty solid line to defend on for now. Now we're just going to sit tight right here. Can't wait to see the final numbers. It's been hard to, to gauge just how many casualties I've inflicted on him because so many units have broken and he's added new reinforcements so many different times after I've brought him down to five, 6,000 men. The cable turned on styles. Love to see what my units, my skirmisher units have done now. Or my sharpshooters. First sharpshooters, 4,100 kills, 12 deaths. Second sharpshooters, 4,477 kills. So nearly 9,000 kills between them. All right, I think we'll wrap it up here and let's just take a look at the final numbers now. All right, so we took Henry Hill and with that, the end of the battle. Uh, my total casualties, <laughs> you can see there half of it was cavalry. Um, 1,154 infantry lost and inflicted casualties, we are looking at well over 40,000. So, like I said, I'm going to be parallel to this playing a major general campaign. We're going to up that difficulty one more time, and after we get through Antietam, we'll switch over to that campaign. So a few more battles to go, but great, great day. Man, that could not have gone better. Oh, it could have gone better. I could have been more careful with my cavalry and lost fewer, but... Honestly, wasn't a lot to be gained by that. Hey, I've got a major general. So let's take a look at the situation now as we gear up for the Antietam campaign. 
Uh, we're going to have Weapons Factory, Chantilly, and then Antietam, of course. And just as it stands right now, obviously this is going to change a lot by the time we get to Antietam. Right now, we're looking at, he's got 57,000. Obviously, I'm going to need more men than I currently have uh, to fight at Antietam successfully. That's going to be a tough one no matter what. So we'll go ahead and get refit, ready to go, and we'll see what happens. Please uh, drop a like. Please uh, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.